Welcome to Prism Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 37 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll discuss about the ASP.NET wizard control properties. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 35 and 36 of this video series. Let's flip to Visual Studio, drag and drop the wizard control onto the web form. So we know that a wizard control is a collection of wizard steps and by default we have two wizard steps here. Let's copy and paste this wizard step so we get a third wizard step. Let's get rid of the ID property here and then change the title to step 3. Okay. So the first property that we will investigate today is the active step index property. Now if you remember from the previous session of this video series, if we want to navigate you know, between wizard steps, we can make use of these built-in buttons, the previous, next and finish buttons. But however, for some reason if I want to programmatically control which step I want to show to the user, is there a way to do that? Absolutely. And the property that we use for that purpose is the active step index. Now we know the wizard is a collection of wizard steps and it's a zero index based collection so it starts at 0, 1, 2. So if I have three steps then the first step index is 0, second step is 1 and the third step is 2 so on and so forth. Now let's say for example you know when the page loads I want to change the uh, skip the first step and show the second step to the user so if I set that to 1 since that is 0 index based look at what's happening step 2 is bolded here which means when this page renders then step 2 of the wizard will be shown to the user now we are doing that declaratively in the HTML source is it possible to do it programmatically absolutely in the code behind file we can do that let's say for example you know for some users when the page loads you know I want to show them uh, based on some condition the step 2 of the wizard control okay how do we do that within the code behind file on the page load event you know in real time we have several conditions I mean there could be several reasons why we may want to do this but for now let's say if 1 is equal to 1 you know which will always be true wizard 1 dot active step index is equal to 1 so you're programmatically changing that to 1 so if we flip uh, to the HTML here you know by default it is step 1 but then on the page load we are changing the active step index of the wizard control so let's run this once again so when the page loads, it will actually load step 2, skipping step 1. Okay. So that's the first property. The next property that we will investigate today is all this while, if, if, we, if you look at the wizard control, you know, to navigate between the steps of the wizard control, we can make use of these built-in buttons, the next, previous, and finish buttons. Okay. But we haven't seen actually a cancel button on the wizard control. Is it possible to have a cancel button on the wizard control? Absolutely. And the way we do that is there is a property called display cancel button which is false by default but if you turn that to true then a cancel button will be shown on that wizard control. Now if you're wondering what is the purpose of this cancel button you know it's left to the imagination of a developer probably uh, you know the business requirement is that the user you know is not required to follow these uh, uh, wizard steps and then maybe he he has to go to a certain page within our application so when i click this cancel button i will redirect the user to that page within my application okay or it's also possible when you click that button you can uh, navigate the user to an external site for example let's say look at this we have turned this cancel, display cancel button to true and there is this cancel destination page URL. So the URL of the page that you want the user to navigate to when they click that button. Okay. Now when I click this ellipsis button then you can select any page within your application that you want the user uh, you know, to navigate to. Or you can even redirect him to an external site. For example, let's say I want the user to go to prajimtech.com. I just type in the URL there and then when we run this and when the user clicks the cancel button he will be navigated to prajimtech.com so I have the cancel button and look at this the interesting thing is the cancel button will be shown on every step of the wizard control okay so on any step if I click the cancel button it's going to redirect me to prajimtech website there 
okay so that's cancel button but then this cancel button has got several properties that we can use to customize it further the most interesting property here is the cancel button type by default it's displayed as a push button but you can change that to a link button so if I change that to a push button or a link button then you have this cancel button text and you can change this to whatever you want maybe go to somewhere or go to you know Prajim so when they click that button they go to Prajim website okay and the other button type that we have is the image button so if you select uh, the button type as image then obviously you will have to specify the image URL for the image button and how do we specify that we have another property called cancel button image URL now within this application I have images folder and I have a cancel button image there so let's set this as the image for that cancel button so let's go to the properties of the wizard control cancel button image URL click the ellipsis button go into the images folder and select this cancel button dot PNG when I click OK so I can customize that there and there are several other properties that you can use the cancel button style where you can set the back color border color etc and the height and width okay so that's about the cancel button the next property that we'll talk about is the display sidebar. By default, the sidebar of the wizard control is shown here. The sidebar is this bar which sto shows step one, step two, step three. Uh, this is shown by default, but for some reason, if you want to turn it off, maybe for space constraints, or your manager told we don't want to display that sidebar to the end user, you can actually uh, hide that. And how do we do that? Just turn this property to false, and the sidebar will be hidden okay and the next property that we will look at is the finish complete button type okay now if you look at the name of the property it's a little confusing finish complete button type what does this mean this means on the finish step of the wizard control the complete button that you have what is it the type that you want do you want a push button for example if I go to step 3 that's the finish step for my wizard control because that's the last step so on this step what is the button type you want for finish button by default it will be a push button okay so finish button finish complete button type okay I can change that to an image button just how just like how we have done it for the cancel button and if you do that obviously you will have to specify finish complete button image URL so you go to the images and then I select finish button I click OK I get an image button there and the same thing you can do for finish previous button type let's say here I want to set that to link button and then in that case you want to set the finish previous button text you know maybe to previous or uh, back whatever you want to call it maybe I want to call this back in this case I can change that to back okay and then the font and full color are the regular uh, properties that you can use to change the font and full color and you have header style and another interesting property is the header text by default this wizard control doesn't have any header text now let's say I want to display some header text maybe we are capturing the personal details of an employee here so I'm giving this header personal details okay so that will be shown there the header text and you can customize this header style header style what is this it's a collection of style properties that we can set to customize this header style for example I want a back color of let's say dark green and then maybe the full color maybe white color and I want to bold the font you know you can customize it to a great extent okay and another interesting thing about this header text you can even change that programmatically in fact all these properties can be changed programmatically now let's say this is a wizard control where we are capturing on step one personal details on step two maybe we are capturing contact details and then step three we will show the summary to the end user um, you know so which means programmatically depending on the step the user is on I want to change the header text at the minute it shows personal details on each and every step we don't want that we want to change the header step header text on a step-by-step -step basis how do we do that okay we have to do that in the pre-render we can do that in the pre-render event of the page so let's copy this just to generate the event handler since this is a pre-render event I'm gonna call this page underscore 
pre-render and then f wizard one dot active step index is equal to one meaning if we are on the second step of the wizard control then I want to set the header text of wizard one to contact details because on second step we are capturing the contact details of the user So let's copy that. Else, if active step index is equal to 2, which means on we are on the final step, then I want to show the summary to the end user. OK, let's run this one now. So when the page first loads, it loads step 1 of the wizard, where we are capturing personal details. But when I go to step 2, by clicking on the sidebar, or by clicking the next button it shows contact details when I go to the third page it shows summary alright let's flip to the web form okay so we have seen the finish previous button and finish complete button we discussed about header style and header text and we have another property called navigation button style okay uh, that's nothing but the navigation buttons that we use so for example if it's you know a push button and then I want to change the back color of that push button maybe to a red I can do that there and then maybe I want to change the font uh, you know I want to bold that and then maybe for color I want to set that to white again all these are style properties which we can basically use to customize uh, the navigation button styles and navigation style this property basically changes the area where we have the navigation buttons the navigation layout basically okay let's say for example the back color of the navigation area uh, I want that to be something like this you know oh that's a border color let's say back color maybe I want this color there you know look at that that's the navigation layout there and similarly you can change several styles you know sidebar button style again we have sidebar buttons here you know you can configure the sidebar buttons here again the same style properties and sidebar style um, the sidebar itself if you want to set the background color maybe to something like a black color you know we can do that and there are several other properties maybe I want this um, you know sidebar basically to be vertical aligned on the top you know we can do that several other properties and then we have the start next button image URL now if you look at this on the start on step one we have the start button okay so that's the next button so start next button type okay again you can configure that to push button or image button or link button whatever so if I change it to image button obviously I will have to specify the start next button image URL so maybe I go to images and I select the next button there so we'll get that image button there similarly for the step you know the first step is the start step the last step is the finish step of the wizard control but then in between we have steps of the wizard control so on those steps we have the previous and next buttons so you can use step next button type to change the next button within the steps of the wizard control and then step previous button type can be used to customize this previous button so for example step previous button type it's a push button if I change that to image button then this previous button is converted into an image button and obviously if you have converted that into an image button then you have to specify the previous button image URL property so I go there I select previous button and that will be converted to an image button and you do the same thing to convert the step next button type we use step next button type uh, property for that at the minute it's a push button but I can change it to link button if I want so there's a link button there or I can change it to the image button if that's the case then I have to specify step next button image URL so I go to the images next button okay alright so 
the next property is the step style property you can change the step style itself you know maybe the back color I want to change something like this you know that's the step area where you will have controls in the back you know for each step okay and then if you look at the this wizard steps you know you can add steps to the wizard controlled uh, in the HTML source you can directly type them here or you can actually use uh, the wizard step collection editor so if you come here click the ellipsis button we get the wizard step collection editor and you can add a wizard step you want give it the title and then uh, set all these properties and then you can move it up or down using these arrow buttons there On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C-Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.